The Russians are trying to break through to Pokrovsk, but to do this, they must first capture Kurakovo, which is under the protection of the 33rd Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces armed with Leopard 2A4 tanks. As Forbes analyst David Axe writes, Russian forces attempted to break through the village of Dalny, south of Kurakovo, but accurate fire from Leopard 2A4s quickly halted the Russian advance. At least one Leopard 2A4 firing armor-piercing rounds punched holes in two Russian tanks, an armored personnel carrier, and several other vehicles, Axe writes. As the analyst notes, in this battle, Ukrainian tanks departed from their cautious strategy. Because of the proliferation of explosive drones that hunt for heavy armor, Russian and Ukrainian tanks often hide in the woods, emerging only to fire a few rounds from their cannons at targets a few miles away or only occasionally to lead a desperate attack, such as the Russian assault on Dalny. The Leopard 2A4 armored tanks of the 33rd Mechanized Brigade were not at all cautious. They fought in close combat and won. The Ukrainian tank crews were helped by the fact that the Russian column was led by two turtle tanks equipped with bulky anti-drone armor that obscures the visibility of the crews and also prevents the tank's turrets from rotating. Axe writes, the Russians have redoubled their offensive toward Pokrovsk while also launching a counter-offensive against the Ukrainian-held salient in western Russia's Kursk Oblast. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has pledged to end the war in Ukraine, potentially by leaning on Russia and Ukraine to agree to a ceasefire along the current front line. Russian President Vladimir Putin is determined to maximize Russian gains and minimize Ukrainian gains ahead of possible negotiations. The pace of Russian attacks has doubled or tripled in Kursk in recent days. There's been an uptick in attacks around Kurakov too. Earlier, the chairman of the Council of Reserves of the Ground Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ivan Timochko, said that the occupiers blew up the dam of the Kurakiv Reservoir because they were counting on building a defensive line there and cutting off the Ukrainian military's logistics routes. Also, according to the expert, the Russians were counting on the fact that if they approached, the water from the reservoir would be released on them. At the same time, military observers Denis Popovich warned that if the Russian Federation captures Kurakovo, they will probably begin an offensive on Pokrovsk. He noted that Kurakovo is currently in a pocket and the occupiers' attempts to advance are aimed at Constantinople. Ukraine expects the Russian offensive to intensify in the coming weeks and military officials, soldiers and analysts view the next few months as a critical stage in the war. Moscow has stepped up attacks in recent months and Ukrainian officials have admitted their defenses are crumbling, the Financial Times reports. Kiev expects the offensive to gather momentum and a Ukrainian army spokesman told the Financial Times that more medical personnel were being sent to the Eastern Front ahead of heavy fighting in the coming days and weeks, particularly in the South and East, the article said. The commander of an artillery unit near Kurakovo, where the fighting is most intense, told the Financial Times that Russian troops were attacking from three sides. He said his unit was ready to retreat, but we have not yet received orders from above. At the same time, according to estimates by the military think tank CDS, by December, the front line will probably shift 30 to 35 kilometers to the west from its current position. The biggest problem for Ukraine remains a shortage of personnel, especially infantry commanders. Analysts say the average age in the various brigades is already over 40 and there don't seem to be enough reinforcements arriving at the front, said Franz Stefan Gadi, a military analyst and research fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies in London. Ukraine plans to call up an additional 160,000 troops between November and February, which the National Security and Defense Council says would fill the military units by about 85% of what is needed. However, military experts and Ukrainian officials are skeptical about whether that goal can be achieved, saying it is more realistic to call up to 100,000 troops. They say this will fill about half the manpower shortfall, which would still be an improvement as some units are currently at about a third of their required strength, the Financial Times writes. At the same time, several Ukrainian commanders and soldiers said efforts to recruit more men into the army were being hampered by indefinite military service. Many guys now perceive mobilization as a death sentence, says one of the servicemen who joined the army in the spring of 2022 and has not taken a break since then. 
At the same time as two unit commanders on the Eastern Front told the publication they have to send qualified personnel, including doctors, to the infantry. War sometimes demands such things, said one commander. I've sent my cooks into the trenches before. Former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced the possibility of sending British troops to help Ukraine. London may take such a step if the new American President Donald Trump reduces military aid to Kyiv. The Telegraph newspaper writes about this. Johnson believes that Britain will have to intervene directly in this war if there is a threat of Kyiv's defeat. This is a scenario that Europe should not allow for its own security. If Ukraine falls, we will face an even greater threat on our borders, on the borders of Europe, where democracies will come into contact with Russia. The former Prime Minister said he specified that the grave consequences of the Ukrainian defeat will be felt, first of all, by the Baltic countries and Georgia. It will also shake up the Pacific region. I want to appeal to people who do not understand why we should support the Ukrainians, because otherwise our collective security will be undermined by a stronger Russia. Different parts of Europe will be under threat, Johnson said. He added that to prevent such a catastrophic scenario, it might be necessary to send British troops to Ukraine. The former Prime Minister noted that there are people in the US Republican Party who are fascinated by Russian dictator Vladimir Putin, and their opinion influences the new American president. At the same time, according to him, it cannot be said that Trump will immediately give up Ukraine as soon as he returns to the White House. This is the same Trump who made a huge contribution to the fate of Ukraine when he authorized the delivery of javelins to it. If he had not done that, the battle for Kiev could have ended very differently, Johnson said. The relationship between Donald Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has always been, to put it mildly, a little complicated. Trump has also expressed some grudging admiration for Zelensky, a fellow TV star turned politician who has demonstrated he knows how to close a deal. I think Zelensky is the greatest salesman in history. Every time he comes into the country, he walks away with $60 billion, Trump said at a rally in September. But after Trump's return to the White House, Zelensky may now have his toughest sales job yet. Trump himself has blamed Zelensky for starting the war. He has also promised to end the fighting in 24 hours once in office. It's not clear how he plans to do that, but Vice President-elect J.D. Vance has suggested it would involve freezing the current front lines in place and Ukraine declaring its neutrality and giving up its ambitions to join NATO.